welcomes to online lecture on chlorophyll fluorescence a tool to study photosynthesis and plant stress in this lecture i am going to discuss about basics of chlorophyll fluorescence its principle and its application and how to use this technique for study of photosynthesis and plant stress chlorophyll fluorescence is a biophysical process originated from the basic process from the photosynthesis so and photosynthesis is the oldest biophysical and biochemical process on this earth as you know photosynthesis is an anabolic process which takes place in the plant leaf and it takes carbon dioxide and water to make the carbohydrate foods in the presence of sunlight and it completes in two stages one is called light reaction another is called carbon fixation in the light reaction when the light energy fall on the chlorophyll molecules then it converted into the chemical potential energy that is atp and nadph which is used for conversion of carbon dioxide into the carbohydrates in the presence of water and this photosynthesis is an integral part of the plant metabolisms and balance it of growth and development which is known to sensitive to different types of environmental stresses and if we see the fate of light energy during photosynthesis then when sunlight fall on the chlorophyll molecules the major part of this light energy are converted into the chemical energy in the form of atp and nadph which is ultimately used for the production of carbohydrate by taking carbon dioxide and water and small fraction of energy is also dissipated in the form of heat that is known as thermoluminescence and very few portion of this dissipated energy are dissipated in the form of fluorescence and this fluorescence emission is directly related to the photosynthetic process and <clears throat> then the basics of the chlorophyll fluorescence and this chlorophyll fluorescence is a small fraction of dissipated energy from the photosynthetic apparatus and if we see the when the light energy fall on the chlorophyll molecules the electrons of the chlorophyll molecules are excited and when the electrons are excited it jumps from this lower energy orbit or ground state to the excited state and when these excited electrons coming back to the ground state it emits fluorescence and generally photon energy absorbed by the photosynthetic pigment drives the photochemical reactions and normally the energy conversions takes place near about 90% of the absorbed quanta and 10% are dissipated through the heat and fluorescence and this change in chlorophyll fluorescence emission from the photosystem given almost all aspects of the photosynthesis and can be used as a indicator to measure the response of or to measure the response of photosynthesis with respect to different types of environmental parameters and this chlorophyll fluorescence can be measured by different types of instruments there are different types of instruments developed by different companies but one of the most uh, easy uh, instruments is known as plant efficiency analyzer which is developed by hansatech and in this instrument it can excites the electrons by using this diodes and when it emits energy in the form of photon to the leaf then leaf is excited and it emits fluorescence that emission can be taken recorded by this instrument and it translates into different types of biophysical processes 
and other instruments one of the uh, another instrument is dual palm that is pulse amplitude modulated chlorophyll fluorescence which is also used generally to measure the chlorophyll fluorescence another is image palm which take the image of the fluorescence and convert that image into different types of biophysical and biochemical parameters and open one principle based upon one principle that is known as korsky effect this Korsky effect is almost all the oxygenic photosynthetic materials investigated so far show a uniform feature related to the chlorophyll fluorescence emission. When a dark adapted leaf exposed to the <coughs> high light, then the first polyphagic rise or characteristic changes of chlorophyll fluorescence transients is seen that is known as Korsky effect. That means if we plot the chlorophyll emission of one second versus time, then it has been seen that this chlorophyll fluorescence transient is a polyphagic. That means O, J, I, and P. And that O, J, I, P is different from different plants. And if we see this is a typical chlorophyll fluorescence transients induced in the dark adapted leaves and if we plot the chlorophyll fluorescence intensity versus times then it shows polyphagic rise from the minimum fluorescence to the maximum fluorescence that is p minimum fluorescence that is o and this ojip transients is directly related or comparable with the electron transport system seen in the chloroplast. This O2J steps, different scientists given different assumptions regarding the transients, regarding the <coughs> shape of these transients to different types of physiological process of the photosystems. And it has been seen that it has been predicted that this O to J step rise is directly related to the photochemistry of photosystems. That means when the electron fall on the photosystem, the electrons are excited, that excited electrons taken by the few fighting, the primary acceptor of this electron, that is known as the photochemistry. And J to I step, J to I is step it directly related to the oxygen evolution and i2p step that relate to the electron transport beyond beyond quinone <clears throat> so this ojip transient is directly related to the electron transport system which is seen in the chloroplast and from these transients there are different types of parameters has been extracted from this one of these parameter is minimum fluorescence maximum fluorescence <clears throat> and another important parameter that is known as a p by fm which is known as maximum photochemical efficiency of ps2 we can reduce we can extract different types of technical parameters from this chlorophyll fluorescence transients and there are also different types of models used for the measurement of the chlorophyll fluorescence and one of these model is known as OJP transients. We can present the data in different forms in the different transients. We can differentiate the different types of samples and also another types of model that is known as phenological model. This is a hypothetical model in which we can present the chlorophyll fluorescence parameters in this model, suppose this is one of this measurement of one second, this is the amount of light absorption, this is the amount of light trapping, this is the amount of light dissipation, and this is about the electron transport, and these are the reaction center, these are the active reaction center, these are the inactive reaction center. And also, in this way, we can also present our data. And also, you can use another model that is known as membrane model. In this model also, this is the same things of the phenological model. In this model also, we can present our data. Then, advantage of these techniques, these measurements takes directly from the intact plant tissue. 
and this method is non destructive and allows several measurement to be taken during the experiments each measurements takes a few seconds the data obtained can be directly processed on the computer and this equipment is highly portable and very easy to use then application of chlorophyll fluorescence and we can use this chlorophyll fluorescence techniques for the rapid screening of stress tolerance plant as you know screening is one of the important aspects of the plant breeding and this aspect can be efficient enough by phenotyping and quantification of stress tolerance plant by using these techniques and second is study the structure function and vitality of the plants we can also study the structure function and vitality of plants by using this chlorophyll process and sometimes we can use this those though it is highly sensitive and it is directly related to the different types of physiological process and it can be used as a passive remote sensing then one case study i want to discuss one that is known as screening of flowering tolerant rice varieties and if we see these are three different types of uh, OJIP transient just I want to show how it has been different from one plant to the another. Suppose this is the tolerant varieties. Suppose this is one of these tolerant plants. This is susceptible to the submergence or flooding. This is avoiding these three different response. You can see the OJIP transients has been measured, plotted in different transients and you can see how this in different duration of submergence or different duration of floodings how this transient is changing one after the other and the less change has been observed in the tolerant variety whereas this transient has more changes occur in the susceptible variety and sometimes it is in the avoiding type of variety so we can present the data in the different forms and also we can present the data in normalized fluorescence transients by which we can know which step is more affected under which stress we can study in this way. Then we can also present the data in this model as already I have told. Suppose say uh, see this is the tolerant plant and this is the tolerant and susceptible in the control condition but after two days of submergence this electron transport is decreasing number of reaction center is also inactivated in susceptible varieties and in the four days of submergence you just see after four days of uh, flooding stress you just see electron transport is totally ceases in susceptible varieties where at some amount of electron transport present in the tolerant varieties in this way also we can screen the plants we can see the vitality of plants we can see the structural and functional alteration of photosynthetic apparatus in different types of plants under different types of stress condition also we can present different types of biophysical parameter extracted from the chlorophyll fluorescence in the radar plot which is so these are the different types of radar plots also we can use and at last in conclusion the chlorophyll fluorescence is a rapid non-destructive and very informative and can be used for large scale screening both in the laboratory and in the field additional analysis also we can use along with the chlorophyll process which gives a clear pictures regarding the plant vitality regarding the plant photosynthetic process regarding the plant physiological process to strengthen the recording to strengthen the no process by which we can effectively analyze the plants this is all about the chlorophyll fluorescence and thank you all